Hey, and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp week three, video five. Um, in this video, what we're going to do, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the last of our series about reading across rows. Um, we've already talked about the lag function and the retain function, and both of those are useful, but really the, the absolute value of reading across rows is obtained when you use the lag and the retain functions with what we are going to learn in this video, which is the first and last operators, right? So um, let me share, let me, let me go back to the whiteboard that we shared earlier on Zoom and see if I can demonstrate this. So the advantage in any SAS data set is when you have multiple columns and several rows, let's say we have columns A, B, C, and D. This first column, let's say, is the ID of the individual. Uh, let's say we have a data set where each individual is in that data set more than once. This is a scenario which is pretty fairly frequent in most big data sets, right? Uh, if you have a data set about a person picking up prescriptions from a pharmacy, well, individuals go to the pharmacy several times to pick up prescriptions. They may have 12 or 18 pharmacy fills in a given year. So if you're looking at an individual's pharmacy fill data, you might have a case where individual one is in there three times, individual two is in there twice, right? So what happens in these scenarios is that you don't have a data set where in each, in each individual is present only once in a data set, there is repetition across data sets. When these repetitions occur, often what we want to do with SAS, when we are doing health outcomes research, is we want to do things like identify how many prescriptions an individual had during the year. We want to identify what was the average cost, average amount they paid in copay across all of the prescriptions for, the, for their fill during 2020 or things like that, right? We want to basically do math operations across rows, but we want to do it for each group or bucket, right? So we want to do math operations across variable B for individual one and then variable B for individual two. We want to do our math operations for variable D across individual one and then individual two. And maybe for variable A, we want to do math across all individuals, right? So we might want to do any of these things, but to do these things, lag and retain functions are not exactly adequate. Here is where I want to introduce you guys to the super technical term I use called handles and buckets, right? Uh, I like to think of using this kind of math with thin a certain individual as being a bucket. So this is a bucket individual one, bucket for individual one, bucket for individual two. When you have a data set with repetitions, it helps me to visualize the data set in terms of buckets. And then within a bucket, I might want to do an operation. Maybe I want to calculate an average for variable two within that bucket. For, for individual two's bucket, I want to calculate an average for variable B. For individual one's bucket, I want to calculate an average for variable B. And then maybe for variable D, I want to calculate a sum in this bucket and a sum in this bucket. In every bucket, I want to calculate a sum or an average for each variable. For doing these things, the retain operator and the lag operator are not enough. In order to have buckets and in order to get SAS to understand what these buckets may be, you have to basically set handles or limits on these things. The way you can do that is using the first and the last operators within SAS. The first operator basically identifies the first occurrence of an individual in a data set. The last operator identifies the last occurrence of an individual within the data set. So the first, first operator is telling you what was the first row where this individual came in first. And the last operator tells you what was the row where this individual is never again seen in the data set. So using the first and the last are like handles. Like you've got two handles and in between those handles is the bucket that you're interested in. Right? Once you've got your handles defined, then you can use the lag function, the retain function, and anything you want to do whatever math you want to work on inside each individual bucket. Uh, at this point, I understand we're all theoretical. I'm speaking in English terms. Let's switch languages and talk, to, uh, talk in SAS terms, and hopefully this will be a little more clear when we do that. Um, okay, before we do anything about these buckets, um, let me first tell you that 
uh, before you use the first and the last operator, the first thing you need to do is you need to sort your data set. So in this case, I want to use my earthquake data set. The reason I am using my earthquake data set as opposed to the Pokemon data set is that in the Pokemon data set, I only had one row of data for each Pokemon. So I really can't demonstrate this concept of buckets and handles in there. But in my earthquake data set, I actually have several rows of data for each region where the earthquake happened. So if you imagine the region to be similar to the ID example I gave you earlier, then you can see how I now have buckets. I have a bucket of earthquakes that happened in the Alaskan Peninsula. I have a, a bucket of earthquakes that happened in Andrianoff Islands, right? And there are one, two, three, four, five, six earthquakes in there. I also have a bucket for the Ascension Land region, but that bucket has just one row for one earthquake. And then uh, you can see Bering Strait is a bucket with four earthquakes. So let's go ahead and first sort this data set by the region variable to make sure that all the Alaska Peninsula rows are all right next to each other so that when you define your buckets and your handles, the, the variables are actually next to each other, right? You, you want all the Alaska Peninsula rows to be right next to each other so they fall within the bucket. Uh, the way to do that is to just use the sort procedure which we learned way back in the first week of the SAS bootcamp. I'm going to say prox sort data equals class dot earthquake out equals earthquake. Now I'm going to use the out function here because um, you guys that are listening into this uh, bootcamp will not have the ability to rewrite a data set in that class library. So please remember to use the out operator and then save the resulting sorted data set into the work library. I'm going to be explicit about that as well. And I'm going to sort using my region. Right. There you go. So let me go ahead and sort it. Log looks good. I believe this data set was already sorted, but I just want to double check, right? It could never hurt. Okay, I think it looks fine. Uh, so let's go back. Once you've sorted a data set, now you are ready to use first dot or last dot variables. Remember, even if a data set if a data set is not sorted, that's what actually throw you an error when we try when you try to use the first and the last operator. Okay, so what is the first and the last operator? The first and last operator. I'm gonna call it data first last demo set work dot the first and last operators are basically two hidden variables within SAS. Right? These are hidden variables. They are present in SAS every time you sort by a certain variable, but they're not always apparent, but you can make them visible and then use them in other things that you want to do. Uh, the way to invoke these variables or to make them not hidden is to write your data statement with a sorted data set. And the first thing you need to do right after the statement is to write the by statement. And in the by statement, you have to write the same variables the exact same way as you had in the sort procedure. If you change this, SAS is not gonna like that, right? So whatever variable you sort by, write that by statement as it is. And this by statement in your data step does not sort the data set again. It basically just tells SAS that you want to be using the first and last operators. Um, the way to invoke the first operator is let's say I want to create a new variable called A. Right? I, I don't want, I'm just going to call it A. Then I'm going to say first A is first dot region and B is last dot region. This first period and last period is the, is the operator that basically tells us it needs to identify the first occurrence of a region in the data set and the last occurrence of the region in the data set. So having run this, having written this, let me run it. We'll look at the data set and hopefully that will that will make things a little more clear. Log looks good. Um, let me see if I can expand this. Okay, there we go. So you see here that the first few rows are on Alaska Peninsula. That's the region we sorted by, right? That's the region variable we sorted by. A is the first that region variable. This is equal to one the first time Alaska Peninsula happens. Every other row, A is equal to zero. And A becomes one again when a new value for region shows up in the data set. And then A goes back to zero again. And then A becomes one when another new value shows up. And then A becomes one again because there was only one row for Ascension, Ascension Island region. 
and then a new value of the region variable showed up at Baja, California, Mexico, and then A became one again. And then A was A stayed zero because we are still at Baja, California, Mexico, Baja, California, Baja, California. And then once we move to Bali C, A becomes one again. So the first dot variable equals one whenever the value of region is new. If SAS's program data vector is encountering this value of region for the first time as it moves from row to row, that value is set to one in the first dot variable. The last dot variable is equal to zero for every single row unless it is the last time that a certain value for region is encountered. So for the Alaska Peninsula region, the value of the last variable or B variable is zero, 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 zero until we come to the last occurrence of Alaska Peninsula. For that row, B equals one. And then for the Andrianoff Islands, the first row B is zero, second row B is zero, third row B is zero, fourth row B is zero, fifth is zero, sixth row, which is the last time the Andrianoff Islands is that value is occurring in this data set within that region variable, B is set to one, right? And then for this Ascension Island region, there's only one row. It is both the first row and it is the last row. So A is one, B is one. For Baja California, Mexico, B is zero for all the rows except the last row, right? So hopefully this is beginning to make a little more sense. Uh, when I usually create these things, I usually call them the variables first and last instead of A and B. Um, in fact, one, one way to be more explicit is first underscore region, last underscore region. And what that tells you is this is the first occurrence of region in the data set or the last occurrence of region in the data set. So let's look at this. So you see that, so now we have a first occurrence variable, last occurrence variable, and these are now my handles. I can utilize these handles and the occurrence of zeros and ones in these two variables to define my quote unquote buckets. Super technical term, I know. This is probably not a language that you will find in any other way as to start, but this is how I envision these data set and helps me think. So I'm hoping it can do the same for you. Uh, these handles that you've got, these handles can tell you how to utilize the buckets and how to utilize uh, all the values that occur within one bucket. A bucket may be several rows long or a bucket may be just one row long. A bucket may have just one row, but at the very least it will have one row and it may sometimes have as many as hundreds of rows depending on how many times that ID variable or that region variable in this case is being repeated. So let me show you guys an example of how to utilize these buckets and these handles. Let's say we wanted to write a piece of code to calculate the number of earthquakes within a region in the year 2012. What we would do is we would say earthquakes, uh, data count earthquakes, count EQ, set work dot earthquake. My data set is already sorted, so I'm going to just not sort it again. I'm just going to write my by statement with region. Um, now, as soon as I have my by statement, I can use my first dot region, last dot region variables to define my buckets. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to first begin by using my retain operator. The retain operator, if you recollect, will help the program data vector in SAS remember the value of that variable in the previous row within that same variable, right? So I'm going to retain a variable called count, but I'm not going to set count to anything. I'm just going to retain a variable called count, right? Uh, Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if um, actually before I before I use those operators, the first thing I want to do after, right after my by statement is I want to create my first dot and last dot variables. Last underscore region equals last dot region. Right? I've got my first dot and last dot variables defined. I have my retain operator set up. Now I want to say if first underscore region equals one, then count equals one. Right. For the first occurrence, I have a typo here. For the first occurrence of that region in the data set, I want the number of earthquakes to be set to one. But if first dot region is not equal to one, if first dot region equals zero, then count equals count plus one. Right? Um, let me go ahead and run this as uh, I want to. I want to only only hold on to the variables that I'm interested in because uh, this can get messy. It has too many variables otherwise. So I'm just going to set region count first dot region last dot region. And 
Okay, so now Alaska Peninsula is in here 10 times. These are my handles for my first and my last. And there's the count variable. And you'll see here the count variable increments from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there were 10 earthquakes in Alaska. Now, I still, do, I still don't have a data set with the number of earthquakes in each region, but you'll see that the last uh, row for each region, where the, where the handle last.region equals 1, gives me the total number of earthquakes that happened in each region. Uh, in the Andrian of Islands, for example, the count restarts and goes up to six. So I know there were six earthquakes in, in the Andrian of Islands. In the Ascension Island region, I have just one earthquake. And then in Baja, California, the count restarts from one, goes all the way up to nine. So I know that Baja, California had nine earthquakes in 2012. Couple of things here. The count variable increments from one to two to two, three, four, and so on, because we say count equals count plus one, and that's pretty normal, right? That's easier to understand. The important thing to note here is that count resets back to one when we go to a new region, right? And how does it do that? Because I've set count to be equal to one only when the new region is encountered in my data set. So when first underscore region equals one, then count equals one, right? So, so for Andrian of Islands, the first time it occurs, count goes back to one and the second time Andrian of Ireland occurs, count just increments by one. And then once it hits Ascension Island region, count resets at one. And then before count can be incremented, we are now at a new region, so count is reset to one one more time. So if I want to know how many earthquakes happen in each region, just retain if last underscore region equals one, then output. Because I don't need all my other rows. I can delete all the other rows in my data set. And this should give me exactly what I need. There's my log output. So now I have only one row for each region, right? This is how I would like to see my analysis data set in more statistical analysis. I just want to see one row per data set. Uh, now, when you've gone down to one row, the first, dot re first region and last region variables become meaningless. So you can't, the handles cannot be seen right now because you've only retained the last row for each data set. So first region is zero, last region is one, right? Uh, Ascension Island has first dot region one and last dot region one because there was only one row for Ascension Island region. But the count variable now gives me the number of earthquakes that happened in that region, right? Super simple. Uh, this, this, it takes a little bit of thinking to get through this, but within three or four lines of code, with very simple lines of code, we've managed to count how many earthquakes happened in each region or in each bucket because we've used our first dot and last dot operators to define those handles. And within those handles, we use the retain operator to, to get SAS to remember this variable, and then we just incremented it for each row in that bucket, right? I hope this makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna finish this video now and I'm gonna start a new video uh, to explain another example using that uh, first dot and last dot operators.